from Wada Brands. Welcome to Enhance Your Life. I'm your host, Jonathan Small, and each week I talk to people from all sorts of professions and backgrounds about how cannabis has enhanced their lives and how this healing plant can enrich your life too. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Enhance Your Life podcast. My name is John Small, and I am your host. So great that you're with us today. We've got a wonderful guest. Heidi Keys joins us, and Heidi is a Denver... Hi. Hi, Heidi. <laughs> and Heidi is a Denver-based artist and the president and co-founder of Puff, Pass, and Paint, great name, which is the first ever cannabis-inclusive, 420-friendly art class. And Puff, Pass, and Paint was started in Denver but now has branches in 10 other cities, including Washington, D.C. They they could use a little puff, pass, and paint. And Brooklyn. So, Heidi, welcome to the podcast. John, thank you so much for having me and for Juana, and to Juana as well for having me, one of my favorite edible brands. I'm so excited to be here. Well, that's great to hear. I know you are are where it all started in Colorado. So tell me a little bit. I, I love an origin story here. You are an artist, and how did an artist go into being an entrepreneur and starting this business? Tell me a little bit about the background. Well, we started here almost, uh, actually it's been seven years ago because we legalized um, recreational cannabis in Colorado in 2014. So I was working as an artist and I have always done art since I was a little kid. It's funny, I was just listening to your last interview with uh, Sierra, Uh, who's also from Denver, and she was talking about art and NFTs. And she was talking about how she has just done art since she was very little, and I've been exactly the same. So I got my degree in art. I grew up in Wisconsin, and I got my degree there. And then I was working as an artist, and when we legalized here, I've I've always been a big cannabis user. I um, have anxiety. That's something that has always helped me with my creativity as well, just, you know, if I'm painting or sketching or whatever. And one of my friends was like, hey, you know those wine and painting classes? You should do that with weed. (laughs) And we were just laughing about it. And I'm like, nobody would do that except for us, you know? And she's like, I think actually people might. So I put a thing on Facebook and I was like, I'm going to do these two small classes just for fun. Anyone want to join? And I did it out of my kitchen. And I had so much of a response that I'm like, I'm just going to keep adding more. And I was just charging them a little bit of money to start. You know, I just thought it would be something that I would do with friends once in a while. And I started getting requests from all over the place. And that's how Puff Pass and Paint became an actual thing. That's so cool. So how does it work now that it's out of your kitchen and actually in a uh, (laughs) like a more of a business model? How does it work? Tell me uh, from the beginning, people sign up. Do you have to bring your own weed? Do you supply the weed? How does that work? So it's all BYOC, and that's to comply with all regulations. We're not a dispensary. We cannot provide any cannabis. So it's all BYOC. Uh, You have to be 21 to do it. Other than that, anyone can do it. You can be of any different age, any different skill level. People come from all over the place, which is really cool. And I think one of the best things about art and cannabis is that it brings people together, right? Like I see people talking in classes and, well, before COVID, sharing joints and that sort of thing, like with strangers that they had just met, which I thought was really cool. It's a great way for people to connect, even if they don't have a whole lot else in common. But they come, they check in, you know, we check IDs and everything. Everyone kind of just gets started smoking, take a little bit. We always say it's stoner time, right? So people are typically a little bit late. So we get started like 10, 15 (laughs) minutes after everybody arrives. And then we teach the class step by step. So you can follow along if you want. Or you can completely do your own thing. This isn't one of those things where we're going to be upset if you like completely go off the off what everybody else is doing. I mean, you can paint a portrait of your cat if you want to. Right. It's completely up to you. And people do their own thing. And the creativity is really cool to see. If people want to follow along, you or one of your instructors is leading a class. And how to, do, you, do you give a specific thing to paint? Do you have a model there? Absolutely. Yes. We have a piece that we work from each month. It gets changed and then we teach it step by step. And also if you're a complete beginner, we teach you how to use the brushes, which brushes to use different techniques. So you can do whatever you want. You can either follow along with us or you can grab different colors and kind of do your own thing too. Yeah. Well, what are examples of some of the things that people have to paint? 
Oh, let's see. Well, we've done, we do a lot of different things that are cannabis themed, of course. We do a lot of different like landscapes from the cities we're in in Denver. We do a lot of cool different mountain scenes. The last one we were doing was like a bong vase with flowers coming out of it. (laughs) So that's a really fun one because people can kind of make that their own too and do different colors for the flowers and that sort of thing. So we have a lot of different, a lot of different options. We're always changing them up. Now, do you find the people who sign up are generally heavy cannabis users or do you get all types of people? Obviously, they have to be over 21. But um, who, who's your gen? Like, how do you describe your general clientele? I, I seriously can't even do that because they're all over the place. It's yeah. so cool. I mean, I've had... I've had, you know, young people in their 20s, you know, like 24, 25, bring their grandparents who are in their 80s. And one woman, her grandmother said she had not smoked weed in like 30 to 40 years or something. And she was like, pass that joint over here, pass that joint over here. And she was so (laughs) funny. And they were just laughing and having such a good time. And she had all these young people around her laughing too. And it was so cool because it was such like a feeling of community and people being very excited about legal cannabis. Yeah. So it's people from all over the place, all different backgrounds, all different ages, as long as they're 21 and all different, you know, skill levels as far as both art and cannabis. What we always say is just no, start low and go slow. I mean, that's a big thing in the edible community as well. Like, mm-hmm. obviously, if you're taking edibles, if it's your first time, like you're going to want to start with a half dose. So we're very careful about that and education in our classes as well. You can always add more. It's harder to take it away <laughs> once you've smoked too much or taken too much of an edible that you, you know, feel a little uncomfortable. So we're very careful about that as well, especially if people are just kind of learning about cannabis and dosing. So you're an artist, you have experience, obviously, with cannabis most of your life. And what is it about cannabis and art? I, I know a lot of artists, from people who paint to, to musical artists, use cannabis, and it really helps them with their art. And we've had people on the show that talk about that. What do you think it is about cannabis that is so sort of conducive to art and creating art? Yeah, I think it's honestly one of the best things for my art and just art in general. And I think the reason is that when you're consuming cannabis, you are enjoying the process more instead of thinking about the end result. And I find that both with myself and watching people in class, because especially so if you if you haven't painted since you were in kindergarten and in our classes, a lot of times we'll ask and people say we'll say, I don't remember painting since, you know, the first grade or since I was 10 years old or something. So they're a little bit nervous and they're thinking like, I'm not going to be good at this. I'm going to look like a fool. My painting is, is going to be bad compared to everyone else's, right? It's just like something that we think about as far as like comparing ourselves when we're doing something we're not super comfortable with. And they think cannabis makes us really like just relax into the process of it or it helps us relax into the process of it so that we can enjoy the actual experience of it instead of worrying, what is everyone else thinking and am I going to be successful at this? Yeah. So it kind of quiets down that part of the mind that's very judgmental. Absolutely. And do you think it helps you see maybe things creatively that you might not normally be able to see if you were just in your kind of normal everyday state? Yeah, I definitely think so. I think, and it also encourages people to experiment with techniques, you know, like in classes, like people will like, oh, use a little bit more water and make their painting kind of drippy and see what happens with it. And I think it just encourages people to kind of think outside of the box Yeah, that we're so used to being in. I mean, creativity isn't really that valued in our society uh, in a lot of places. Yeah, And so I think a lot of times we forget how to be creative because we're, we're worried about judgment. So Mm -hmm. how did you get past the judgment? How do you, you know, you've made your life art. Is it, it, has it been cannabis? I mean, how do you get to a place where you're like, I don't care. I don't care what people think. I mean, I think a lot of it is cannabis and, you know, just being able to do this for the past seven years, like this is honestly my, my, this is my dream job. I mean, I still, I still say that, you know, and it's not always easy and it's not always fun. But it's, it is still the best thing I could possibly be doing, you know, with the things that I love in my life. 
and seeing so many other people, thousands and thousands of people come through our classes. If I'm ever having a bad day and then I go into teach or I don't teach as much as I used to anymore because I'm, you know, doing more behind the scenes stuff. But if I go into help at our studio or something, I always leave in such a good mood yeah. because people are having so much fun. And I think that's one of the most rewarding things for me. And I think that's why it doesn't, it doesn't matter to me what people think anymore who might be judging, you know, the artist lifestyle or cannabis use or anything like that, because I know how it benefits me and I know how it benefits other people. What's been one of the most interesting, you know, pieces that have come out of one of your classes that you've taught, or maybe a class that one of your instructors has taught, have there been some really interesting uh, creations? Yeah, definitely. I'm trying to think, I mean, sometimes people just shock you. Like you will always walk around the room, like after we do each step to see if anyone needs help or has questions. And sometimes you'll come upon somebody and they're just doing the most incredible thing. And you're like, oh my gosh, do you paint often? And they're like, no, I haven't painted in a really long time. And it's really cool to see people find that within themselves. Like there was, um, we were in, I was at a class in DC and this guy did this incredible like DC, like skyline of the buildings. Mm. And I was like, did you, are you looking at a picture for that? And he's like, no, I just had it in my memory and I just painted it. And it was just, it's really cool to see that. So lots of weird, funky, and really amazing pieces come out of our classes. And, um, you know, some of them are not traditionally successful art, yeah. but they're fun and they mean something. And you've had this experience. And even if you don't love your painting, you still had a really good time. So whether you hang it on your wall at home or not, it doesn't really matter. It's really more the experience of painting. I mean, one thing I found is that sometimes when I'm when I'm high and I'm doing art, and I'm a writer mainly, so I don't really do all my mother as a as an artist. But um, so, like, I'll be writing when I'm high, and I'm like, "This is so good! Like, wow, this mm-hmm. is like, you know, like because because the non judgmental mind is kind of quieted. I'm like, this is amazing. And then I go back and read it when I'm not high, and I'm like, this is kind of terrible. <laughs> right. So okay. I, so like, um, what's the saying? Write drunk, edit sober, right? Right, right. It's so kind of like, the same. Paint high, paint high. Yeah. Do you do that? Or do you do when? Sober? Yeah. <laughs> do you do that when you do? You know, when you're working on your own art, do you go back and you know, kind of touch it up when without being under the influence of cannabis? Oh yeah, a million percent. Sometimes I'll be in the zone and I'm like, oh, I am feeling it. This is so good. This is so good, right? And then the next day you look at it and you're like, oh, I really. I know. <laughs> really in a different place <laughs> but you wonder if maybe you should have just been high, you should just be high all the time maybe that's what snoop dogs yeah. snoop dogs uh secret yeah, is just yeah. be high every minute so that everything looks good and you know who knows what reality is the real reality anyway <laughs> the reality yeah, i mean that's that's what i try to do so yeah i mean just kidding but. yeah no i know i know well that's it's so cool you know, so you mentioned that there's the paint and sip things. I don't know if you ever tried that. I'm wondering what the difference is. Like, you know, not to be judgmental of booze, but I wonder if it's a different type of vibe in a cannabis uh, puff and paint and a sip and paint. Do you have any thoughts on that? It is. Yeah. And I have done them because I just wanted to see what the difference was. And also, like, we're always trying to better our techniques, too, to make it easier for people to, you know, more accessible, accessible for people. I think the main difference is cannabis makes you introspective and creative. Whereas I know with me personally, alcohol tends to make me more sloppy, Mm -hmm. (laughs) kind of tired. And it's not that way for everybody, but that's definitely how I feel. Um, Whereas if I'm smoking instead, I'm really thinking in my head, like, okay, this is cool. Like adding these colors and, you know, kind of like creating a plan of what like feels and feels good and feels like it would look good or whatever the, you know, following whatever the vibe is that I'm painting. I think also what we really pride in our classes is you can do whatever you want creatively. And I think a lot of the wine and painting classes are very much like you're going to paint these flowers and everyone should look the same. And, you know, we're doing the exact same steps and using the same colors. And we're very much like, we're providing you with step-by-step instructions. But if you want to do your own thing, we want you to enjoy this experience like as much as we're enjoying it. So if you want to go off on your own path, you're totally fine to do that. And I think that's one of the coolest things because you provide people with a bunch of techniques and colors. And while you're giving them instruction, their own minds are going to turn it into something else. Yeah. You know, so it's kind of the way that everyone 
um, I just takes the instructions and just goes on their own path. And I think that that's really cool. Yeah, that's super interesting. And probably less fights break out uh, at the at the cannabis. Uh, <laughs> you have pump. never had a single fight. <laughs> Yeah, we've never had anything like that. Never had a single fight or any sort right. of right. Cannabis thing chills like, people out. out yeah. there's no yeah, bar. Definitely. You never hear of like bar. You hear of barroom fights, but you don't hear like you know cannabis lounges of like a big fight broke out because it just chills no. you out and it's totally different. Definitely. I'm curious because so you have these different locations, and I've li- I've read lists like Netflix lists where like what people watch in like DC is completely different than what people watch in Denver. Mm-hmm. And, it's just interesting. I'm wondering about the art. Do you see different kinds of art come out of different markets? Like, has it been really interesting to see how different places kind of produce different or Is there kind of a universal stoner language that no matter where you are, you know, you're going to be a kind of a, a certain person? It's really funny because there, there definitely is. Well, Denver, we have a lot of people traveling here from all over the right. place, right? So like, that's kind of a conglomeration. I definitely have noticed in like the East Coast classes, it's really funny. They really like the steps. Mm-hmm. They don't like to go off on their own path as much. Like, especially in DC, they really like the steps. They really want to like follow the process of it. And I think that that's really cool. That's something that I've noticed, like when we were in California, because we were, we don't have classes there right now because of COVID. But like, I felt like LA and San Francisco, those people would be all over the place. Like (laughs) they're all painting something different. They don't even care. There's a teacher there. They're kind of just all over. And it is really cool seeing the different dynamics in different cities. Even like DC to New York is is very different, you know? Yeah, for sure. But different locations so that's so interesting it's really neat and i love that about yeah all right well you mentioned that you had to close down some of your schools because of the pandemic which is such a bummer are you opening back up now yeah it was crazy for us just like it was for everybody you know it went from this it's this you know i was traveling all over the place every weekend i was at a different location to all of a sudden we didn't have anything for for months oh my god how did you survive are you okay were you okay yeah, we yeah, we were. I mean, it was definitely wild for me. It was such a, it wasn't even like a transition. It was just a screeching halt, yeah. like it was everybody, you know? We started doing virtual classes. So that was something, we just started doing free ones on our Facebook and Instagram, because I'm like, I gotta keep myself get busy. I gotta keep people engaged. I'm going crazy in the house. So we just started doing those a couple of times a day and that was super fun. And that led us into creating what we now have, which is a virtual class kit which we send all of the supplies to you there every Saturday. So you get your supplies in the mail and you also get smoking supplies and smoke hemp, but we can't send any cannabis yeah. with, with THC in it, of course, because you know, that's not federally legal. Um, and we can't provide that, but smokeable hemp comes in your kit as well as like rolling papers and lighters and stuff like that, as well as all of your art supplies. And so then you just log on at a certain time and you do your class with a bunch of people from across the country. And those are really fun too. So that got us started in the virtual classes. And then as Denver started to slowly open up, uh, cause we did pretty well here with keeping things, keeping COVID numbers down. Mm-hmm. So we were able to open up in small numbers relatively early compared to a lot of other spots. So we just started doing very, very small private classes, all socially distanced. You wear your mask unless you're smoking or actively eating or drinking. And um, we were able to just kind of bring things back slowly that way. And now we're, as with everyone else, getting back to normal. So. And you can still take virtual classes? Yes, you can. They are on Saturdays and you just sign up online. We ship your kit out to you and then you just get a Zoom link and you join when the class starts. So it's seven o'clock Denver time on Saturdays, right. which also means that it's going to be different times around the country too. Yeah. So some people's class starts at nine. If you're in California, it starts at six. Are those limited capacity or could anybody come in? We can do about 20, yeah. 20 groups. Everyone's, it's interactive. So like everyone can talk and ask questions. Right. So anything more than that, it's a little crazy. You get a little chaos. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, but they're really fun. That's super fun. All right, well, and, and is there any plans for the future to open up in any other cities? Like now that we're hopefully going to at the end of COVID, although as we record this now, we're talking a lot about the Delta mm-hmm. strain and, and California, unfortunately, has has uh, started a mass mandate again internally uh, inside. But are there plans to expand the business? 
Yeah, I mean, so we're back in Denver. We are back in D.C. And then Brooklyn will be back within the next two weeks, which is really exciting. Can so we cool. see you again, New York? Yeah, we're so New pumped. York. And then we'll be back in California, uh, Chicago. Oh, gosh. And we've, we've had three different locations in California. So we've done San Francisco, Orange County, and L.A. So we should be back in those hopefully soon. Chicago and a few other spots. But it's kind of just we're doing it slowly right now just because – we, we don't know what's going to happen with the virus. And so, you know, when we are hiring teams again and that sort of thing, we just want to make sure we're doing it slowly and correctly and, you know, making sure everyone still has a really good experience and not rushing things too quickly. It strikes me. So there's so many like beautiful dispensaries here and they're always looking for sort of like community activities to do like in the back. Like yeah. I just went to a dispensary that just opened up in L.A. called Wonder Bread. And they have this beautiful backyard area that's kind of like, I think they have a permit for for people to consume there. Have you ever oh, cool. con- considered like working with dispensaries so that people could go in and I don't know, just seems like it would be an interesting, you know, to do it at a dispensary so people could buy their, they, I don't know. Why, why yeah. am I th- I'm thinking yeah. like an entrepreneur here, like, oh, wow, you could expand your business. <laughs> no, I, we would definitely do that. I mean, for a very long time, dispensaries were not allowed to have any sort of consumption on site. And I know that that's changing now in California. And it's there's different rules as far as where you can consume in every different state. Yeah, it's city, complicated. County, even neighborhood sometimes. So it's like having our lawyer go into each location and be like, okay, what can we do here? Who can we work with? You know, like, what are the what are the laws? So we're always trying to be very conscious of that. For a very long time, dispensaries couldn't have any consumption on site. But absolutely, I mean, if it's a place that has a permit, we would definitely do that. That would be so great. So fun, right? All right. So if people want to find out more about Puff Pass and Paint, <laughs> <laughs> where should they go? You can go to puffpassandpaint.com. And then, so we actually are Cannabis Tours. It's CannabisTours.com is the same business. We also do tours, cooking classes. So cool. uh, Three classes, um, a bunch of different stuff. I mean, we do cannabis-friendly airport transportation and hotels and stuff as well. And so if you want a list of all of the classes and events, that's CannabisTours.com. And PuffPassandPaint.com is the painting and art classes. And then you can follow us on Instagram or Facebook at Cannabis Tours and at Puff Pass and Paint. And we post a lot of pictures of like our tours and people also send in like paintings that they've done in class and stuff too that we repost. So you can follow us I am so doing this when you guys open back up in LA. I really want to try it. Please let me know. We would absolutely love to have you. It's super fun. It would be great to meet you in person. I know. I know. Well, Heidi Keys, thank you so much for doing the podcast and coming on the show. It's such a fascinating uh, journey you're on, and and you're I think you're offering a wonderful uh, service to the world. So thanks for doing what you do. Thank you so much, Jonathan, and thank you, Wana. Love you guys. <laughs> All right. Enhance Your Life is brought to you by Wana, the number one infused product in North America. Wana's entire process is designed to deliver the same great experience time after time. They have spent years fine-tuning their recipes so that their products are delicious, consistent, and potent. For more information, head on over to wannabrands.com. That's wanna, W-A-N-A, brands.com.